Years ago, I was somewhere overseas preaching. Pre dosta godina propovedao sam negde u jednoj stranoj zemlji. And let's just say in this country nobody was in a rush to do anything. I hajde da vam kažem u toj zemlji niko se nije žurio da bilo šta hitno uradi. And everything was the last minute, the last minute. I sve se dešavalo u zadnji čas. It's such a difference in cultures. Toliko je to bilo različito kao kultura. I mean, you ever deal with the Germans? Znate kako je to kod Nemaca? You know, a year before I speak in Germany, they want to know what are you going to talk about? Godinu pre nego što govorimo nemačko, oni žele da znaju o čemu ću da pričam. You know, how do you want your eggs cooked? Uh, how do you want your eggs cooked? Aha. Kako želite na koji način da vam skuvamo vaša jaja? You know, what color do you want the wallpaper in your room? Very detail oriented. I kako želite u kojoj boji da vam bude ofarbana vaša soba? I think they found me a little frustrating. Mislim da sam ja bio to malo frustriran. But in this country, everything the last moment. A u ovoj opet zemlji, sve je bilo u zadnji čas. And it's some morning, I'm supposed to have the morning off. I jednog jutra trebalo da imam slobodno jutro. And at 7.30 in the morning, the union president comes banging on my door. I u pola osam tog jutra dolazi predsjednik unije i lupa na moja vrata. In two hours, I'm going to be speaking in a woman's prison. Kaže, za dva sata treba da govoriš u jednom ženskom zatvoru. I knew nothing about it until then. A do tog trenutka ništa nisam znao da će to trebati da se desi. So I had to get dressed, get ready, and think of a sermon to preach in a woman's prison. Tako da je trebalo da se obučem, da se spremim i da smislim šta ću ja sad da propovedam u tom ženskom zatvoru. And the whole time he's talking to me and I'm thinking, what am I going to say? I svo vreme dok on meni nešto priča, ja razmišljam, a šta ću ja sad da kažem tamo? And the thought came to my mind, the thief on the cross, the thief on the cross. I misao je došlo u moj um, razbojnik na krstu, razbojnik na krstu. So I rushed, I got dressed, and I threw together a sermon on the thief on the cross. I ja sam onda se požurio da se obučem i da na brzinu sastavim tu propoved o razbojniku na krstu. You know, and I have no idea how much good it did for the woman, women in the prison. I have no idea. I iskreno, ja zaista ne znam koliko je to bilo na korist tim ženama u zatvoru. But it did me a real lot of good. Ali mogu da vam kažem da je ta propoved za mene bila vrlo korist. And I just want to share just some of the things that I saw in this story that have really blessed me. I hteo bih s vama da podelim neke stvari iz tog izveštaja koje su meni bile na blagoslov. Now at this point Jesus is on the cross so you know the background. Jesus got tried, arrested and crucified, stuck on the cross. Vi znate taj izveštaj u tom trenutku Isus je već na krstu, on je bio optužen i bio je već razapet, visi na krstu. And also on the cross were two criminals with him. Na krstu su bila i dva razbojnika sa njim zajedno. And let's pick up in Luke 23 starting in verse 32. I hajde da mi tu priču čitamo od Luke 23. glave čitajući od 32. stiha. Why don't you restart reading the first few verses? Let's go ahead. Read the first three verses, Luke 23, 32. Dobro, znači čitamo od 32. stiha 23. glave u Luki. Tekst kaže, Vođehu pak i druga dva zločinca da pogube s njim. I kad dođeće na mesto koje se zvaše košturnica, on je razapeše njega i zločince jednog s desne strane, a drugog s lijeve. A Isus govoraše, oče, oprosti im jer ne znaju šta čine a dijelići njegove haljine bacahu kocke. 
Did you go and he divided up the clothing by casting lots? Yes. Okay. That's okay. Fine. He saved others. Let him save himself if he is Christ of God, the chosen one. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Read that. Čitam i sljedeći stih. I narod stajašete gledaše, a i knezovi s njima rugahu mu se govoreći, drugima pomože, neka pomože k sebi i sebi, ako je on Hristos i zabranik Boži. This is the king of the Jews. Okay. Okay, get to that part, then we'll stop. Čitamo dalje. A i vojnici mu se rugahu i pristupahu k njemu i davahu mu ocat i govorahu, ako si ti car judejski, pomozi sam sebi. Okay. Uh, Okay, okay, okay. Now this is the immediate background here. Ovo je taj naš uh, kontekst direktni. And he's being mocked by the Romans and he's being mocked by the religious leaders. I njemu se rugaju i Rimljani, a i verske vođe. It's in this context that we first meet the thieves. I tek u ovom kontekstu mi uh, prvi puta srećemo ove zločince. And then in Luke 23:39 the thieves appear again. A onda u 39. stihu ponovo se pojavlja ova tema. And one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. A jedan od obešenih zločinaca huljaše na njega govoreći: "Ako si ti Hristos, pomozi sebi i nama." Now we don't know much about these men. We know they were robbers. Okay, they were criminals, crooks. Okay. Znači, mi ne znamo puno o ovim ljudima, ali znamo da su bili kriminalci, da su bili razbojnici, kradljivci. But you know, even in the Roman society, the Romans weren't going to put these men on the cross for stealing bread to feed their hungry children. Ali čak i u rimskom društvu Rimljani ne bi nekoga razapili na krst ako je možda ukrao hleb da bi nahranio svoju gladnu decu. Okay, they must have been pretty bad criminals oni to mora... be crucified with Jesus. Oni su morali biti vrlo ozbiljni razbojnici da bi bili razapeti zajedno sa Isusom. And then one of them there starts mocking Jesus. I onda jedan od njih počinje da se ruga Isusu. Then he said, the, the, then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. I tekst kaže da je jedan od njih počeo da hulije na njega i rekao mu, ako si ti Hristos, pomozi sebi i nam. Notice what he's doing. He's repeating the words of the religious leaders. Zapazite što on radi. On ponavlja reči verskih vođa. Notice, this thief, I'm assuming, was Jewish. So he was mocking Jesus as the Messiah. He was making fun of that. You know, the Romans, they didn't mock him as the Messiah. They didn't care about any of that Jewish Messiah stuff. Rimeni mu se nisu rugali kao Mesi, njih nije zanimala ta mesijanska ideja. They mocked him as a political leader. If you are the king of the Jews, you know, and they mocked him that way. That's what they cared about. Oni su mu se rugali sa političke strane. Ako si ti car jevreja, onda hajde sada. Znači, s te strane su pristupili, politički. So Jesus is being mocked as the Messiah and he's being mocked as the king of the Jews. Tako Isusu se rugaju kao Mesi, a i kao je jevrejskom caru. Then Luke 23 verse 40. A onda imamo 40. stih. But the other answering rebuked him saying, "Do you not fear God seeing we are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. A drugi odgovarajuće šutkaše ga i govoreše, za se ti ne bojiš Boga, kad si i sam osuđen tako. I mi smo još pravedno osuđeni, jer primamo po svojim dijelima kao što smo zaslužili, ali on nikakvo zlo nije učinio. 
Now, according to Matthew and Mark, at first, both the thieves mocked Jesus. They both did in the beginning. Prema Mateju i Marku, oba razbojnika su se na početku rugala Isusu. Luke doesn't focus on that. He just focuses on what happened afterwards. Luka se ne fokusira na to, nego se fokusira samo na ono što se desilo kasnije. So at first they're both mocking and cursing Jesus. Na početku obojica se rugaju Isusu i uh, proklinju ga. And then this one apparently changes his mind. Honda po svemu sudeći jedan se predomislio. So you've got two thieves and there's two different attitudes towards Jesus. Tako da imamo dvojicu razbojnika i dva različita stava prema Isusu. First of all, the other thief, he confessed, he admitted his guilt. Prvo onaj drugi razbojnik je priznao svoju krivicu. It's pretty amazing for him to say we are suffering justly for what we have done. Prosto je nevjerovatno da on kaže mi pravedno patimo za ono što smo učinili. And then it's amazing too. He starts to rebuke the other thief. Don't you don't mock this man. Don't you know who he is? Jo ne, je nevjerovatno da on ukorava onog drugog razbojnika, kažemo nemoj da se rugaš tom čovjeku, zar ne vidiš ko je on? He said this man has done nothing wrong. On kaže taj čovjek nije ništa zlo učinio. That's pretty heavy. I don't know if he understood the implication of his words. To je vrlo snažno. Ne znam da li on sam razumeo implikacije onog što je rekao. Now in the book Desire of Ages, Ellen White gives some fascinating insight into this second thief. U knjizi Čežnje vekova Ellen White nam daje jedan fascinantan uvid u ličnost ovog drugog razbojnika. Why don't you just translate that? <laughs> Ellen White je tu napisala uh, da je on video i čuo Isusa ranije i bio je osvedočen u ispravnost njegovog učenja, ali se odvojio od njega kroz uticaj sveštenika i vladara. Uh, on je nastojao da uguši osvedočenje i sve dublje i duplje, dublje je ulazio u greh. Sve dok nije bio uhapšen i uh, dok mu nije suđeno kao kriminalcu i dok nije bio osuđen da umre na krstu. Okay. You know, stifling conviction by plunging into sin ugušiti osvedočenje kroz uh, sve dublje i dublje ulaženje u greh. That's pretty bad. I mean, it's one thing if he didn't know, but he was convicted and tried to hide what he felt. To je prilično loše, zar ne? Ako je on bio zaista osvedočen i onda pokušao da to odgurne od sebe, to je loše. And again, he, you know, plunged into sin i onda to što je duboko ušao u greh I mean the Romans didn't care if he didn't honor his father or his mother or bow down to idols Rimene nije zanimalo da li on poštuje oca i majku i da li se klanjao kipovima i idolima The sin that he plunged into was so bad the Romans hung him on a cross Ali greh koji on počinio bio toliko loš da su Rimeni odlučili da ga obese na krst So he sees Jesus is can been convicted by Jesus and then turns away. Znači on je video Isusa, bio je osvedočen da je Isus u pravu i onda je krenuo drugim putem. And now he sees Jesus again. I sada on Isusa vidi ponovo. And he hears Jesus say probably Father forgive them for they know not what they're doing. I on vjerovatno je čuo kada je Isus rekao, oče, oprosti im jer oni ne znaju šta čine. And he hears the religious leaders mock him as the Messiah and the Romans mock him as the king of the Jews. I on čuje te verske vođe koji mu se rugaju kao Mesiji i čuje rimljane koji mu se rugaju kao caru jevrijskom. And it's clear by what happens next that he starts to realize who Jesus is. 
I kroz ono što se desilo kao sledeće, jasno je da je on počeo da svata ko je zapravo Isus. Think about it at that moment. Razmislite o tome, u tom trenutku. There are only two people in the whole world who Postoje... know who Jesus is. Postoje samo dve osobe u celom svetu koje stvarno znaju ko je Isus. Of course, Jesus himself. Naravno, Isus sam. And this dying thief on the cross. I onda ovaj razbojnik koji umire na krstu. And so because he recognizes Jesus, what does this man say to him? I pošto on svata ko je Isus, šta mu on kaže? He said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. On kaže, gospode, seti me se kada dođeš u svoje carstvo. I mean, here's a criminal. He's being tortured. He's dying. Ovde je taj kriminalac koji je bio mučen i koji umire. And all around him people are yelling and mocking and hurling insults. A oko njega su sve ljudi koji viču i koji se rugaju i koji vređaju. And yet in the midst of all this he says, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I u sred svega toga on kaže, Gospode, seti me se kada dođeš u tvoje carstvo. And what does Jesus say to this man? A šta Isus kaže ovom čovjeku? This criminal, ovom razbojniku, this man who stifled his conviction by plunging into sin. Ovom čovjeku koji je ugušio svoje osvedočenje ranije i duboko ušao u greh. This man who a little bit earlier had been cursing him. Ova isti čovjek koji ga je nedavno proklinjao. What does Jesus say to him? Šta Isus njemu kaže? He says, well friend, I'd like to help you, but you know, thou shall not steal. Pa prijatelju, želeo bih da ti pomognem, ali samo da znaš, ne treba da se krade. Did Jesus say that to him? Da li mu Isus to rekao? Did he say, Fred, I'd like to help you, but you know, you shouldn't let the leaders turn you away from me. Znaš, prijatelj, ja bih volio ti pomognem, ali nisi trebao da dopustiš da te te narodne vođe odvoje od mene. Did he say, well, friend, I'd like to help you, but you shouldn't have been cursing me. Prijatelj, ja bih volio ti pomognem, ali nisi trebao mene da proklinješ. Did Jesus go back and quote him the Old Testament about living a holy life? Da li je Isus njemu citirao stari zavet i govorio o tome kako treba voditi svet i život? Did Jesus look ahead knowing what Paul would write? Quote him from Paul about, like Paul said, follow holiness without which no man will see God. Da li je Isus znajući u napred šta će Pavle napisati, da li mu je govori o tim tekstovima gde Pavle kaže tražite svetost bez koje niko neće vidjeti Boga. He didn't quote him Moses, he didn't quote him Psalms, he didn't even quote him from his own sermons. On mu nije citirao Mojsija, ni psalme, pa čak ni svoje sopsene propovedi. And Jesus didn't look ahead to the spirit of prophecy and find some spirit of prophecy quote to beat him over the head with. Niti je Isus, gledajući u budućnost, izabrao neki cita duha proštva i našao neki dobar s kojim će da ga tresne po glavi. Instead, he looked at this man. Umjesto toga, on je pogledao ovog čoveka. A criminal. Razbojnika. Clearly, he had a defective character. Očigledno, on je imao karakter sa nedostacima i manama. He looked at a man that had absolutely nothing to offer him. On je posmatrao ovog čovjeka koji nije imao apsolutno ništa da mu pruži. And what does Jesus say to him? A šta mu Isus kaže? Without any preconditions. Bez bilo kakvih uslovljavanja. Without any caveats or small print, what does he say? bez bilo kakvih specifičnih odredbi ili onih odredbi napisanih s malim sitnim slovima ispod. He looked at this helpless man who had nothing to offer 
And he says, I'm telling you right now, you will be with me in paradise. On je pogledao ovog čovjeka koji mu nije imao ništa da mu ponudi. Pogledao je ravno u oči i rekao, ti ćeš biti sa mnom u raju. Right? Isn't that what it says? Je li tako? Ne piše li upravo to? Am I missing something here? Da li sam ja nešto propustio u tekstu? I mean, if I'm missing something, somebody tell me. A ako sam nešto propustio, neka mi neko to kaže. But here's a man has absolutely nothing to give to God. Ali evo ovdje ovog čovjeka koji apsolutno ništa nema da da Bogu. It seems like his only relationship to the law was to break the law. Izgleda kao da je njegov jedini odnos sa zakonom bio taj što ga je on kršio. I mean, talk about a powerful example of grace. Ovdje govorimo o jednom moćnom primjeru blagodati. Blagodat, yeah, I learned blagodat. Talk about blagodat. E, o tome pričamo, o blagodati. I mean, I mean, this man didn't have any good works to offer Jesus. Ovaj čovjek nije imao nikakva dobra dela da ponudi Isusu. I mean, when the Bible says you're going to be judged by works, what works did this man have? Biblija kaže da će nam biti suđeno po našim delima, ali kakva dela je imao ovaj čovjek? You know, what you see in this story is a real life example. Ono što vidimo ovdje je jedan primjer iz stvarnog života. Of Paul's words, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Uh, primjer koji ilustruje Paulove reči, jer mislimo da će se čovjek opravdati verom bez dela zakona. As I said, it seemed as if his only relationship to the law was to break it. Kao što rekoh, izgleda kao da je jedini odnos koji on imao sa zakonom, taj da ga je on kršio. Now look, we're seventh day Adventists. Mi smo adventisti sedmog dana. Our very name shows how important we believe God's law is. Naše ime već govori o koliko mi smatramo da je zakon Boži važan. We believe it's so and God's law is so important our very name reflects it. Mi smatramo da je Boži zakon toliko važan da i naše ime koje nosimo već odražava to. And we're called to obey God's law. I mi smo pozvani da budemo poslušni Božjem zakonu. But I don't know about any of you, but I know me. I ja ne znam kako je to kod vas, ali znam kako je kod mene. I try to keep God's law in God's strength. I try to keep God's law. Ja se trudim da Božjom silom držim Božji zakon. But if there's one thing I'm sure of. Ali ako sam u nešto siguran, my law keeping is not good enough to get me into heaven. Moje držanje zakona nije dovoljno dobro da me odvede na nebo. You know, I've been an Adventist now over 40 years. Adventista sam već preko 40 godina. And if there's one thing my experience has taught me, i ako postoji jedno iskustvo, ako postoji jedna stvar koju me moje iskustvo naučilo, an experience that I interpret through the Word of God is that if I am not saved by the exact thing that saved the thief on the cross, if I'm not saved by that, then there's not a doubt in my mind. I'm not going to be there. I'm just not going to be there. Period. Onda ako na taj način neću biti spašen, onda ja neću stići tamo. Tačka. Jednostavno ne, neću uspjeti. Now some people want to argue with me with that and that's fine. Then you're a better Christian than I am. A ako neko tu hoće da se sa mnom možda raspravlja, možda ste vi bolji hrišćani nego ja, ne znam. But if I'm not saved by the same thing that saved him, I'm lost. Ali ako ja nisam spašen kroz istu stvar kroz koju je spašen on, onda sam ja izgubljen. Now, I remember, oh, it could have been about 20 years ago. Sećam se, možda je to bilo pre nekih 20 godina. I preached a similar sermon, I think I was in Portugal. 
Propovedao sam jednu sličnu propoved, mislim da je to bilo u Portugalu. And I remember after I got done preaching. I sećam se tako kada sam počeo da propovedam. These two guys walked up to me, were coming up to me. Ova dva čoveka su dolazila k meni. And they had fire in their eyes. A u njihovim očima je bila vatra. And I knew what was coming. I ja sam znao šta će sada bude. And you know, I saw some of my early self in them. Uh, ja sam video nešto od onog mog starog ja u njima. So I said to myself, all right, don't fight with these guys, try to minister to them. Ja sam sebi rekao, neću ja sada s njima da se svađam, ja ću pokušati da im služim. And they came up to me. I došli su kod mene. And they basically, I, mean, I don't think even I would have done this, they came up and told me I'm going to hell for the sermon that I preached. <laughs> I ja ne vredno bi ja to tako rekao, vjerojatno mislim ovog starog sebe, i rekao su mi u suštini da ja idem u pakao zbog te propovedi koje sam propovedao. And you know, I really wasn't upset with them, I understood them. I ja nisam bio nešto uzbuđen zbog toga što su mi oni rekli, ja sam u stvari njih razumeo. And I just said to these guys, ja sam im samo rekao, I said, you know, if I'm wrong about my th- this theology, ja rekao sam, ako moja teologija je po ovom pitanju uh, pogrešna, then I'm going to go to hell for a whole lot of other things long before my bad theology puts me there. Rekao sam, onda ću ići u pakao zbog mnogo drugih stvari pre nego što ću otići u pakao zbog moje pogrešne teologije. You know, in many ways, what did Jesus offer that thief? Did he give the thief what he deserved or not? Uh, da li je on ovom razbojniku, da li je Hristos ovom razbojniku da ono što je on zaslužio ili nije? He didn't get what he deserved. On nije dobio ono što je zaslužio. You know, I remember when I first got converted about 40, it's about 40 years ago. Kad sam se ja tek obratio, što je bilo pre nekih 40 godina. And I knew absolutely nothing about the Bible, salvation, I knew nothing. Ništa nisam znao o Bibliji, o spasenju, ništa. And I had met some Adventists and I was studying with them. Ja sam sreo neke adventiste i proučavao sam Bibliju s njima. But I was also with some other Christians and I was with them as well in the beginning because I didn't know what I was going to do. Ali sreo sam i neke druge hrišćane i s njima sam se isto družio. Još nisam znao o kom ću pravcu ići. And it was the day after I was born again. The day after. I dan nakon što sam bio nanovo rođen, znači sledeći dan, these other Christians had me at their worship service. Ovi drugi hrišćani su imali bogosluženje. First Christian worship service I had ever been to. Prvo, Never went to one before. To je bilo prvo hrišćansko bogosluženje na koje sam otišao. Nikad nisam pre toga otišao na neko. And I'm in the front row. Ja sam tu u prvom redu. And the pastor gets up there. I pastor ustaje. And he says, he's preaching on something. I on je propovedao nečemu i kaže And then he says Who wants justice? Rekao je ko hoće pravdu? Well, you know, I'm 23 years old. Ja sam imao 23 godine. You know, I was pretty cynical for 23, but who what 23 year old doesn't want justice? Ja sam bio prilično ciničan za jednog 23 godišnjaka, ali ko ne želi Pravdu. So the pastor says, who wants justice? I pastor kaže, ko želi pravdu? And I just jump up and I put my arm in the air. I want justice. I ja sam odmah skočio i podigao ruku i rekao, ja hoću pravdu. And then people are pulling my hand down, pulling my arm down. A ljudi su mi vukli ruku na dole kao, ne, ne. And then I'm thinking, what am I getting myself into? I had no idea what they were talking about. Ja sam pomislio, ušao sam se, ja to upustio, nisam uopšte shvatio o čemu oni to pričaju. But see, now I understand. Ali vidite, sad razumem. If I got justice from God, ako bih ja dobio pravdu od Boga, if I got what I deserved, ako bih dobio ono što zaslužujem, I close my eyes in death, 
Ja bih zatvorio oči svoje u smrti. And the next thing I know is boom, I'm alive again. I sledeća stvar koju bih znao jeste živ sam opet. And there'd be the holy city coming down. I tu bi se spuštao onaj zlatni grad. And we know the rest of what would happen. A znamo šta je ostalo što bi se desilo. But that's not what happened to that's not what's going to happen to the thief. Ali to se neće desiti ovom razbojniku. He didn't get what he deserved. On nije dobio ono što je zaslužio. And that is the essence of blagodat, grace. If you got what you deserved, you wouldn't have grace. Grace is because you don't deserve it. A to je esencija ono što se zove blagodat. Blagodat je kada vi ne dobijete ono što ste zaslužili, nego ono što niste zaslužili. No, there is a thing called alternative histories. Postoji nešto što se zove alternativna istorija. Their stories what would have happened had history played out differently. To su one priče kada zamišljate šta bi se desilo da se istorija desila drugačije. What would have happened had a young art student named Adolf Hitler got accepted to art school as opposed to being rejected. Šta bi se desilo da je mladi student koji je pokušao da se upiše na fakultet umetnosti, a koji se zvao Adolf Hitler, bio primljen na taj fakultet umetnosti što je bio odbijen? How different would world history be? U kojoj meri bi se istorija sveta promenila? Now in the sermon I have another example. Imam ja ovaj propodi drugi primjer that I've used. Koji sam koristio. And I wasn't sure if I should use it here. I nisam znao da li da ga koristim ovde. But he told me it's okay, so blame him. A ovaj mi je rekao da je u redu da ga iskoristim, pa onda njega okrivite ako treba. But what would have happened if Archduke Ferdinand's driver? Ali šta bi se desilo da je vozač princa Ferdinanda Instead of getting lost, went the right way. Umesto da se izgubio, da je otišao pravim putem. And Gavrilo Princip wasn't able to kill him. How different would world history be? I da Gavrilo Princip nije uspeo da ga ubije. U kojoj meri bi to promenilo svetsku istoriju? Well, we don't know. We don't know. Ne znam. Now. Is that okay to use that example? He told me it was okay. Je li okej da iskoristimo taj primjer, znači on mi je rekao da jeste. Okay. Now, suppose. Dobro, ajde sada da pretpostavimo. Suppose after Jesus said that to the thief. Nakon što je Isus to rekao tom razbojniku. Suppose a Roman ran up to the thief on the cross. Zamislimo da je Rimljanin dotrčao do tog razbojnika na krstu and said, "Hey, you have been pardoned by Pilate." I da je rekao, "Hey, tebi je Pilat oprostio." And they got the thief on the cross down. I oni skinu tog razbojnika sa krsta. Now chances are people usually he probably would have died anyway. Okay. Moguće je da bi on Svejedno umro. But suppose he didn't die. Ali hajde da pretpostavimo da nije umro. Suppose he survived and went on to live. Pretpostavimo da je preživeo i nastavio dalje sa svojim životom. How do you think he would have lived now? Šta mislite kako bi on tada živeo? Again, we don't know. Opet mi ne znamo. But I don't believe he would have gone back to being a thief. Ali ja ne mislim da bi se on vratio tome da krade. He would have had a new life in Jesus. On bi imao jedan novi život u Isusu. Would he have been flawless? Would he have been perfect? No, he would have grown in grace. Da li bi bilo bez mane potpuno savršeno? Ne, ali but, on bi rastao u blagodati. But there at the cross he had the promise of salvation. Ali tamo na krstu on je imao obećanje o spasenju. You know, that day on the at Calvary. 
tog dana na Golgoti. There were three crosses. Postojala su tri krsta. Jesus is in the middle. Isus je bio u sredini. Two men, one on one side, one on the other. I dva čovjeka, jedan na jednoj, drugi na drugoj strani. Neither one of them were angels. Ni jedan od njih nije bio baš anđeo. One of them ultimately gets everything. Jedan od njih u konačnici dobija sve. One of them is going to ultimately get nothing. A drugi od njih u konačnici neće dobiti ništa. And what made the difference? Was it their works? A šta je načinilo tu razliku? Da li su to bila njihova dela? Was it their characters? Da li su to bili njihovi karakteri? Was it their obedience to God's law? Da li je to bila njihova poslušnost Božjem zakonu? You know, at, at that moment before they were equal before God and before Jesus, sinners condemned. U jednom trenutku pre toga oni su bili isti pred Bogom, pred Isusom, grešnici koji su osuđeni. And that one without any works, without any good works on his part. I to je bilo bez ikakvih dobrih dela na njihovo, na njihove strane. Without any way to earn salvation. Nisu imali nikakav način da zarade svoje spasenje without anything to make him right before God in and of himself. Ništa nisu imali čime bi mogli sami da sebe učine pravim pred Bogom sami po sebi. At the best he understands. I najbolje što je on razumeo, he claims the righteousness of Jesus for him. On traži pravednost Hristovu za sebe. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Gospode, seti me se kad dođeš u carstvo svoje. And basically Jesus says to him, I Isus mu kaže, despite your faults, usprkos tvojim manama, despite your weaknesses, usprkos tvojim slabostima, despite your past sins, usprkos tvojim prošlim gresima, Despite everything that you have done to, that deserves condemnation. Usprko svemu onom što si ti učinio uh, što te vodi ka osudi. Because of my righteousness, I'm telling you you will be with me in paradise. Zbog moje pravednosti ja ti sada kažem bićeš sa mnom u raju. And ultimately no matter who we are, you konačnici bez obzira ko smo mi, no matter how long we've been Seventh Day Adventists. Koliko dugo smo već Adventisti? No matter how much God has worked out His holiness in us. I koliko je Bog postigao svoju svetost u nama. No matter how faithful and obedient we are. Bez obzira koliko smo poslušni i verni. No matter how much we truly do reflect the character of Jesus. I koliko u kojoj meri mi zaista odražavamo karakter Isusa? In the end the only thing that saves us is what saved the thief on the cross. U konačnici jedina stvar koja nas spašava je ono što je spasilo i ovog razbojnika na krstu. And it's ours the same way the thief on the cross got it by claiming it for ourselves by faith. I mi treba kao i taj razbojnik verom da zatražimo to što je on dobio na krstu. Okay. 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 Amen.